Welcome to the God's Peculiar People podcast, where we learn about the lives and characteristics of God's Welcome people. back to the God's Peculiar People podcast. As I mentioned last week, for the month of March, we will be looking at the different eras of modern missions. So let me explain that really quickly. Most people agree that there are three eras, and one way to define them is as the first era. Thankfully, we're starting with the first one. The first era to the coastlands, and this runs from about 1792 to 1910. The second era is to the interior, from 1865 to about 1980. And then the third era, to every people group, 1934 to the present day. And you notice there's some overlap in these time periods because many of the things kept continuing the way that they were. And so there is overlap there. Now, as a side note, before we get going with this week's episode on the first era of modern missions, uh, make sure you're following our God's Peculiar People channel on YouTube. If you would, we will be posting daily videos about missionaries who serve during each of the eras of missions. So starting on Wednesday of tomorrow, the first short video will be posted at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And I hope you'll enjoy them. Just kind of a little tidbit about some of the missionaries from this era to kind of help you get a kind of an idea idea of which missionaries served when. So, should be fun. Now, for this episode, we will look at the first era and what sparked the modern missionary movement in 1792. Now, in order to talk about this missionary movement, we must look at the life of William Carey, known even today as the father of modern missions. Now, before we begin, I want to make it clear that missions work going to others outside of your hometown, state, country, continent, etc., has been going on since Jesus issued the Great Commission in Matthew 28, 18-20. We read in Acts and later in church histories of the apostles going to the ends of the known world with the gospel. They were the first missionaries. Throughout the ages, from 33 AD to 2023, there has been no end of missionaries. And in the future, we will talk more about those early missionaries. But for now, we're focusing on the modern age of missions. So most people do credit to William Carey with sparking the modern missionary movement. And for the sake of this episode, we're going to just stick with him. We're going to start with him. Um, There was another Protestant group, the Moravians, who were influenced by Nicholas von Zinzendorf. They had, by 1760, sent out over 226 missionaries. So as I said, missions work has been going on for quite a long time. Now, William Carey felt a burning sense of responsibility to reach the millions who had never heard the good news of Jesus Christ. But few Christians of Carey's day shared his feelings. At a meeting of Baptist ministers in 1785, Carey raised the question, was not the command given to the apostles to teach all nations obligatory on all succeeding ministers to the end of the world, seeing that the accompanying promise was of equal extent? Good question. For ministers of the day, this was a peculiar interpretation of Jesus' Great Commission. At the time, it was believed by many that the Great Commission was given only to the apostles and was not meant for all believers throughout time to perform the Great Commission. The ministers of that day believed that if God wanted people to be converted, he would have to do so by conferring on the people of that day the same signs, wonders, and miracles which were performed by the apostles as they preached the gospel. Therefore, Carey's question did not receive an enthusiastic response from the other ministers of his day. Carey went on to publish a tract called An Inquiry into the Obligation of Christians to Use Means for the Conversion of the Heathens. This tract, along with a sermon he preached on May 30, 1792, helped to pave the way for the forming of the Baptist Missionary Society on October 2, 1792. From the forming of the Baptist Missionary Society in 1792 to the forming of the China Inland Mission by Hudson Taylor in 1865, some 21 major missionary societies were formed. Now, this may be a very low number, but those are the names that I found on a list of mission boards for that time. And if you want to see the names of all these mission boards, please visit godspeculiarpeoplepod.wordpress.com to read the names. I'll make sure to include a link to that in the show episode. But real quick, just a couple of those names would be the London Missionary Society, the British and Foreign Bible Society, the Southern Baptist Convention Mission Organization, and of course, the China Inland Mission. William Carey was a man whose actions followed his words, and a year later, he and his family landed in Calcutta, India. Though Carey was filled with eagerness to start his work, 
Discouragement soon set in. The caste system of India proved to be a formidable obstacle to seeing people accept Christ. It would be seven years before Carey would see his first convert, and during that time, he dealt with the death of a child, his wife's deteriorating mental state, and an almost total lack of financial support from England. Yet, William Carey never gave up, and he never went home. From his arrival in 1793 until his death in 1834, William Carey never returned to his native land. This next quote is from an article called Winning the World, Carey and the Modern Missionary Movement. It was published by Christianity Today and was written by Brian Stanley. William Carey made many Christians of his day feel uncomfortable. His insistence on taking the Great Commission at its face value embarrassed pious men for whom obedience to the missionary call seemed ludicrous and impractical. His independent spirit in India alarmed more timid souls in England whose understanding of missionary work bore little relation to reality. Yet he did more than any other man to awaken the conscience of Protestant Christians to the spiritual needs of millions worldwide who had never heard of Jesus Christ. End quote. What I find interesting about Carey is that he saw the need to carry the gospel beyond the comfort of his home and native land. Then he acted on that need by going himself. Carey did not simply spout his beliefs and then encourage others to go. No, he packed up his household, traveled across the world, and went to work. Having put his hand to the plow, he never looked back in the sense that going home was not an option. William Carey was there for the long haul. The time span of this first era of modern missions began with William Carey, but thankfully we can say it did not end with him. From 1792 through 1910, we see many others joining in the work of sharing the gospel. Many of the names listed below are the names of missionaries I have not heard before. Their doctrines, actions, political leanings, etc. were that of the time they lived in and might not be things that we would agree with today. But this list of just a handful of missionaries is helpful for us to see who these people were at that time who were willing to go and tell others about Christ. So on this list we have Henry Martin. He went to Calcutta. He had heard of Carey's work in India and was moved to be a missionary himself. Robert Morrison, he went to China. After 25 years of work, he translated the whole Bible into the Chinese language. Adoniram Judson went to Burma. His mission and work with Luther Rice led to the formation of the First Baptist Association in America to support missionaries. Hiram Bingham went to Hawaii and was the leader of the first group of American Protestant missionaries to introduce Christianity to the Hawaiian Islands. Robert Moffat went to South Africa, and he was the first translator of the Bible into Setswana. Lot Carey went to Liberia. He was an African-American Baptist minister and lay physician who was a missionary leader in the founding of the colony of Liberia on the west coast of Africa in the 1920s. Betty Stockton went to Hawaii. Stockton was the first unmarried woman from the United States to travel to Hawaii as a missionary, as well as the first African-American to serve as a missionary in Hawaii. John Williams went to the Pacific South Seas. The Williamses became the first missionary family to visit Samoa. Alexander Duff went to Calcutta. Duff was twice shipwrecked before reaching Calcutta, where he opened an English language school for Hindus and Muslims, combining Bible studies with aspects of Western science that challenged local religious beliefs. Thomas Birch Friedman went to the Gold Coast. He is widely recognized as a pioneer of the Methodist Church in colonial West Africa, where he also established multiple schools. David Livingston, of course, was in Africa. Livingston is one whose work began as a first-era missionary, but he is better known for the work he did pushing inland, opening up the country for missionaries to follow as a second-era missionary. Henry Townsend worked in Nigeria, though he originally went to Sierra Leone before transferring to Nigeria, where he published a newspaper in 1859. This is said to have started off the print media in Nigeria, and the newspaper was the first bilingual paper in the country. John Tyler Jones went to Thailand. He translated the New Testament into the Thai language. Melville Cox went to Liberia. Sadly, he died within four short months. He's quoted as saying, Let a thousand fall before Africa is given up. Alan Gardner, South Africa. He explored the Zulu country, and he started the first missionary station at Port Natal in present-day South Africa. And of course we have Hudson Taylor, who went to China. The lives of many missionaries span the first and second era of missions, and we see the style of ministry begin to change. The emphasis had already been changing from working only in cities and coastal regions to going inland. But one of the great proponents for going inland was, of course, Hudson Taylor. 
and the establishment of the China Inland Mission on June 25th, 1865. Now, I would like to know who is a missionary you find most interesting from the first era of modern missions. You can let me know via email, comment, DM, eh, whatever suits you. Now, don't forget to visit the YouTube channel for daily shorts, Wednesday through Monday, on missionaries who served during the first era of missions. The videos will be about a minute long and will introduce you to a missionary you might never have heard of before. We'll talk to you next week on the God's Peculiar People podcast.